I want to talk today about what exactly it means that uh, all creation groans, all creation groans. As the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 22. Now, if you've ever longed to be released from your earthly body, uh, to be free from sin and the physical suffering which is associated with it, then you know something of what, uh, about what Paul meant when he said all creations groan. All right? In the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 22, let me just read for you this. It says, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. I don't know if you're groaning. But to better understand the meaning of all creation groans, it helps us to consider the context, all right? You better consider the context. In the book of Romans chapter 8, the Apostle Paul is teaching believers that their new life in Jesus Christ is uh, solidly founded on God's promises and plans for his children. The first promise uh, that Paul touches on this is that... uh, the, uh, the the future glory which is waiting for us, all right? And he said in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 18, that I consider our present sufferings as insignificant compared to the glory that will soon be revealed in us. We may suffer now through our journey here on earth, but Paul reminds us that this world is not our home, all right? This world is not our home. I don't know if you're still there and you're thinking, I still have more time. This world is my home. I have this and this to handle. I have. Come on, this world is not your home. Look at the world around you and tell me if this is your home. Just look at the world around you. Tell me, is this world your home? No, it's not my home. In the book of First Peter 2 verse 11 says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Why? Because this world, it's fighting you and it's, it wants you to do evil things so that you can be like it. And also the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 13 says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Hmm. Are you a stranger in this world? Or are you embracing this world? Are you groaning to get out of this place? Oh, my friends, I can't just tell you how much I'm groaning to get out of this place. And awaiting us is a glorious future kingdom where death is defeated and tears of sorrow, pain, grief will all be wiped away. The Bible told us in the book of Revelation chapter 21 verse 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor nor crying, neither shall there be there any more pain, for the former things are passed away. When we firmly lay hold of this promise from God, we can begin to view our current troubles as just light and momentarily troubles compared to the far greater eternal weight of glory. 2 Corinthians 4.17 The Bible says, For our light affliction. Why is Paul calling it light affliction? Because (laughs) this is just light. Come on, they, they, they are sending you to jail because of Christ? This is light. They want to kill you because of... uh, This is light. They can kill the body, but they can't kill the soul. And he continues and says, For a light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. There's something huge. Something huge ahead is coming. All right? And uh, now when we look at uh, Romans 8 verse 19 which says, For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestations uh, of the sons of God. The earnest expectation of the creature, the new creature, waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. 
Having seen that, we understand that Paul says that all creation is eagerly awaiting that future glorious day when God's children become who they were always meant to be. Someone called uh, J.B. Phillips. He said that the whole creation is on tiptoe to see the wonderful sight of the sons of God coming into their own. And because of the fall of man, every part of God's creation was subjected to a curse, right? I don't know if you know this, but um, the Bible tells us about this curse in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 20. It says, For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who was subjected the same in hope. All right? Have you seen that one? So under that curse, all creation groans. And the ground was cursed for Adam's sake. And your children of Adam, thorns and thistles and noxious weeds began to grow. All of Eve's daughters have labored painfully in childbirth and death entered the world. As the Bible explains the whole story in the book of Genesis uh, chapter 3 from verse 14 to 19. I don't have time to go there, but you can go and read And you will see all this. They came as a result of the separation, the sin of Adam. And in Romans 8, 21, Paul tells us, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God, we will be delivered. Oh my goodness. I can't wait for that day. Paul explains that uh, the entire universe held under the curse eagerly longs for the day when it will join with God's children in glorious liberation from death and decay. And Paul is speaking of the new heavens and the new earth when no longer will there be any more curse. Revelation chapter 22 verse 3 says, And there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. There will be no more curse. It will be gone. And the curse of sin will be lifted. All creation will be restored to the Eden-like reflection of God's glory, exactly the way it was supposed to be. Think about the book of Isaiah chapter 65 verse 17. It gives us a picture It says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered, nor come even to mind. The things that you're suffering right now, the trials and tribulations and the issues that you're going through right now, uh, you will not even remember. Even even one, you'll be like, "Oh, Oh, that, oh, they sent me to jail. Oh, I don't care. They could have killed everything. And also Isaiah 66 verse 22 tells us, For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. (laughs) Amazing. Let me also show you uh, in the book of 2 Peter 3 verse 13. It says, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. That is where we are looking on. All right? That's what we are looking on. And as the Bible told us in Revelation 21 verse 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. Are you crying right now? Are you in pain? Are you in different situations? And you're asking, Lord, What's going to happen of me? What's all this mess? Let me tell you, one day, one time, God is going to wipe away all your tears, all the things that you felt in your life, and all the things which have always pulled you down, and different situations, different mandates, different this and that. And people is like, they are so much against God, they just want to do opposite. They want to pull you to hell with them. And you're refusing, and they are pinning you down and they are persecuting you. Don't worry. One day, one time, as the Bible has told us in Revelation 21, that God will wipe away all tears from your eyes. The older 
things will have passed away and they will not be remembered anymore. You'll not even care what really happened. Right now, the entire creation reflects the curse of sin. All creation groans. That is, all created things suffer a common misery. Being in a state of pain and disorder, the groaning is intense. And as Paul shows, as in the pains of childbirth, when he's talking about this, when the last sin is removed from the children of God, all nature will burst forth in glory. And the full work of redemption includes the reversal of the, cl- uh, of the curse. So don't think that God is going to just save you and then you live under some curse. No. <laughs> no. In Christ Jesus, there is no curse because Jesus became the curse for you and me. And as a part of creation, we believers also groan even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as to foretaste the future glory. We still long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children, including the new bodies that he has promised us. All right? Just as the Bible told us in Romans 8, verse 28. And also, you have to understand, God promises a magnificent future for the believer complete with a brand new glorified body. At uh, present, we only have a test through our glorious future, through the presence of the Holy Spirit within us. He's the down payment. He's like a down payment. He's the honest or deposit guaranteeing our full adoption as God's children and the release of our body from sin and suffering. All right? 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22 says, Who has also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit, of the Spirit in our hearts? So we have the earnest of the Spirit, assurance of the Spirit in us. And also look at 2 Corinthians 5, 5 says, Now he that has wrought us for the self-same thing is God, who has also given us the earnest of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. You've seen that. And also Ephesians uh, 1, 13 to 14 says, in whom also you trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that you believed, something happened. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. And this Holy Spirit, do you think is, 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 is going to live? No. He's in you. Until you're redeemed. Look at Ephesians 4.30. It says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. So the Holy Spirit is not going out. Don't think that is going anywhere. He's there. He's sealed to the day that you're redeemed. All right? But in the meantime, all creation groans, and believers, along with the rest of the fallen universe, they travail as a woman in childbirth, longing to be clothed in the heavenly body, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2 says, For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. That house is the new body. Alright? The house is the new body. The Bible says, Don't you know your body is the temple of God, this body that you have? But still, it tells us one day, one time, we will get a righteous, fully, 100% clean, glorified body and significantly the pain of childbirth is not endured without the hope of a new life when a woman is in labor she goes through all that pain all that situation but she knows one day one time it's going to happen i'm going to have a new life and paul knowing that that kind of hope transforms a suffering Paul, knowing that hope transforms suffering, he gave believers this inspiring metaphor. Just as a woman labors through the agony of birth pangs with the hope of a new life, all creation groans as it awaits for the promise of full and final restoration and redemption. Brothers and sisters, we may suffer now, but uh, our heavenly reward is worth the wait. Please wait for it. Groan right now. But don't worry, the time is coming. 
you will shed no more tears for the old things will be gone and the new will have come and that's the end of our today's bible study lesson hope it was a blessing to you hope you did learn something and remember you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family and don't you forget to favorite our podcast and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new bible study lesson and if you like to get saved or you need a uh, step by step bible verses on the order of salvation so that you can well preach to your friends and family or maybe you just feel led to support our ministry or buy some cool christian merchandise kindly visit our website kithmoki.com for more details and breakdown otherwise i hope to see you soon in the next one